thoroughly equipped. God wants to equip you thoroughly. Say thoroughly. So that you don't do things that you should not do. That you don't do things in ignorance. And don't make too many mistakes. Because sometimes we do things and we don't understand what's going on now. What did I do wrong that this thing is now happening to me? Huh? You get a flat tire next to the road, you can go and trace it back, man. It's not for nothing. Sometimes it's to save you from an accident and a curse that lay ahead. And so you get out, you kick the tire. Stupid tire. They gave me this stupid tire. It's not a stupid tire. God made the tire flat because he knew an accident is waiting there for you. Or maybe you got a flat tire because you're angry at your auntie now. You can be angry at your auntie, but not for too long. You think you one day can stand before God and argue like you argue with humans? And argue sometimes even with the pastor. You want to tell the pastor a couple of things. You think you can do that with God? Huh? Huh? I think he will, he will laugh at you. The Bible says he laughs at his enemies. God is holy. I've seen this, the words of Jesus, when he preached to me once. And I preached that on Sunday evening, I think. You know, that day when Jesus preached to me, I wanted to write up the, everything that he, but I could not. He preached to me a couple of minutes. I, if, I tell you a couple of minutes, if it was, if it was not maybe a minute or two. But it's, it felt so long. And I thought while he was preaching to me, I must write this down. I do not have a paper. I do not have a pen. How will I remember what he preached to me now? And he was so seriously preaching. I will never forget that. His seriousness. I tell you, he didn't play. Sepu, he didn't play. It was not a nice sermon. It was not a, a wishy-washy, ear-tickling sermon. It was so serious. So serious. So serious. Never has anyone so serious with me like Jesus preaching to me on that day. So serious. No one ever spoke so seriously to me like Jesus was preaching to me. So serious. I was sitting, and he was walking like I do now. He was walking around me, and I was sitting on a rock, and he was preaching to me, pointing to my heart all the time, pointing to my heart, pointing to my heart, so seriously. Never seen anyone so serious than he was on that day. But the one thing I could not remember, when I came back from that vision, that experience, I thought, I'm, I, and I wanted to think, remember what he said to me, I couldn't remember one thing. And I was so disappointed immediately. But the Holy Spirit immediately said, don't worry. Everything he preached to you, he preached here and he placed it here in your heart. And from now on, when you preach to the people like this morning, it will be the worst words that he invested in you that you will preach to the people. And Sunday evening I was preaching, I forgot completely about this. How can I remember? Because I forgot all. And as I preach on Sunday evening, I remember, hey, the one thing I remember about his words his words penetrated every fiber of my being. Every fiber of my being. Every fiber of my body. My soul and my spirit. We one word of him penetrated and filled my whole being and affected my whole being. And that's how powerful his words are. And that's why when you read his word, you plan to go and cheat another person. You're busy with a business deal. You think it's okay to do that, but you know actually it's wrong. Your conscience tells you, but you sear your conscience. You, you, you press down your conscience. You suppress your conscience. You're going to do that in any way. And then you go and sit and read your Bible. It's the words of Jesus. And then it says, hey, you receive a bribe. Hey. And then the words of Jesus, just this, you receive a bribes, corrupt the country. And immediately say, hey, if I do this, I will destroy myself. The words of Jesus, those words, penetrate your whole being. Change your mind. Change everything. Change your motive and your attitude concerning the thing that you want to do. And you say, Lord, let me rather leave this. I could harm myself. 
But you say, since the Zion is so overwhelming and strong, sometimes when you could have taken hold of this five million bucks, at that point you read God's word and you know if I touch this five million bucks, I will be in trouble. And after God's word is gone, you miss the five million bucks now. You're actually angry that you missed it. That's how a human, the human heart is desperately sick. Yours included and mine included. And afterwards you think, why didn't I take this? I missed it now. I know it was wrong, but now I missed it. I missed the five. You feel bad that you missed the five million. But you know when God's word was speaking to you, penetrated your whole being, you should not touch it. Because the money is corrupt. And you can reckon, you can reckon, ah, not me who stole the money, I just got it from another man. The one who touched corrupt money, even if he didn't steal it himself, is guilty of stealing it. If he knows it's corrupt, even if he doesn't know it's corrupt. Because ignorance was never ever an excuse and will never be an excuse. So you say, but I didn't know it was corrupt money. Well, you took it in any way. It will curse you. You take money, you better make sure where that money comes from. Because if it's corrupt money, it will curse you. Whether you knew it was corrupt or not, it will still curse you. I need to tell you this. Because people think ignorance is okay. I didn't know. I'm free. No, you're not free. I didn't know it was a sin. I'm free. No, you're not sin. You're not free. Say to God next to you, where will I hide from his presence? Where will I hide my heart from his judgments? Because we justify everything that we do. We justify that. The human heart is desperately sick. You can understand it. Never rely on your human heart. Only rely on the words of Jesus. Because that man is the only man that never sinned. That's why his words are so powerful. And he's the only one who's got the right to judge. But he didn't judge. Give him a great hand. Amen. The only one who had the power and authority to judge when he was on the earth, he didn't judge. Amazing, huh? So here in Africa, we throw one another with stones if they do something wrong, huh? Or we cut them to pieces, nah? We are cool, huh? Huh? What's this nice, no? The only one who's got the right to take a stone and throw another man is Jesus. But he never did it. Let me tell you, Judgment Day is going to be a horrible day. You take note of his words. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come to your senses and you don't judge. Become like Jesus because the purpose of a Christian is to become like Jesus, to be affected by his words that penetrate every fiber of your being. That was amazing that day, Tsepi, when he preached to me. Woo, it was amazing. His words penetrated every fiber of my being. Sad to say, in my body and in your body, there's still the sinful nature. And every day you've got to choose between the sinful nature that is still in your members and the holy nature that comes by the Spirit of God in your heart. Every day, you and me need to make a choice. 
against evil for God, so that you might live. Therefore, the Bible says, save yourself. Say to God, he's to save yourself by listening to his words. Save yourself from this wicked generation. Save yourself by considering the words of Jesus. Every day. Every day. Hallelujah. God says, I put before you life and death. You need to choose. The choice is yours. Hallelujah. 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 Will you ever forget in your life? You may never forget Jesus. Let them never ever forget this one. There's many rocks in Africa, huh? The people like to throw rocks, now. Nah. Who's got the authority to take a, pick up a rock? To throw? Come on, help me, someone. He is worth out sin. Is there anyone in Africa that is worth out sin? So when the Africans pick up rocks to stone the sinners, what are they doing? They bring judgment upon themselves. May you never forget. Now I know from now on, from today on, not one person listening to me here or there will ever pick up a stone again. Give Jesus a hand. Amen. You heard the words of Jesus. The only one who's got the right to pick up a stone is the one without sin. And the one who has never sinned, never picked up a stone. He's the only one who could pick up a stone, but he never picked up a stone. So the woman caught in the act of adultery, when all the people left because no one could, pick, could take up the stones. When they were all, all gone, he looked up at the woman and said, where are your accusers now? <laughs> Lord, they're gone. Didn't they condemn you now to death? No, Lord. Jesus said these words, Neither do I. Who's got the power to condemn you? Neither do I. But, take note, go and sin no more. So Jesus didn't say to her, go, now you can go and play with the men. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Go and sin no more. In Jesus' name. I know a man in Nigeria, his, sin, his name is Sin No More. <laughs> because that man was sick. He was so sick, so sick, you've never seen a sick man like that. He was sick where a man doesn't want to get sick. He was so desperate and so sick, he came to that synagogue church of all nations of TV Joshua. He came naked because he could not put clothes on his body. His body was so messed up. You know, when your body is so full of sin and messed up with sickness, even the clothing on you will irritate and hurt your body severely. You know that? He came there naked. Everything was rotten. His genitals was rotten because of sin. The sickness, disease, and the fruits of the sin came out from the, the point of his penis. Everything was swollen and burst open. It was such a mess. He was just standing there. It was such a mess. He couldn't put on clothing. That's what sin do to you. And I remember the day when that man of God, David Joshua, prayed for him. As he prayed for him, out of, out of his penis came all these flutes in front of everyone. But then the civilized countries that we live, oh, we don't show things like this. We should expose sin for what it is and what it does to us, and less people will sin. Everything was open, burst open. Even his testicles was popping out. It was a bad sight to behold, but it's on, on video. You can see it. E.B. Joshua prayed for him, he repented of his sins. And God restored his whole body completely, totally healed them all, alles. 
So guess what his name is now? Sin no more. He's still working there. You've got a hand on there. <laughs> He's so scared of sin, he doesn't leave that place. Sin no more is his name. He's one of the guys, when you go and visit TV Joshua, come and pick you up at the airport. Sin no more. He's completely well and healed. Give God a hand for his grace. Hallelujah. Say, God's grace is good. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, turn to you and never say, you need these words in your life. So whatever you need, you need healing, go to his words. You need deliverance, go and read his word. You want to steal, first go and read his words concerning stealing. Get, get yourself a concordance concerning stealing. You want to fornicate, go and read his word concerning fornication and the consequences of fornication. You want to judge? Go and read his word concerning judging. Whatever you do in life, first go and read his word. You need to wash yourself on a daily basis. I said to the people the other day, Sunday evening, I think, when I bath, you ask my wife, I bath myself thoroughly. There's not a portion on my body that escapes the soap. I wash in between my toes severely. You just see bubbles. I wash every part of my body, in the ears, everywhere. Almost even in my nose, everywhere. Psh. Where I'm, when I get out of the bathroom, it's wet everywhere at life. My wife always complains. Hello, Pam. <laughs> so I wash myself thoroughly. There's not a part of my body that's not been washed thoroughly this morning. And so it is with Scripture as well. So the washing of the Word cleanses your body, your soul, and your spirit thoroughly when you take heed to his words. Now we can read the last one. The washing of his words. The washing of the word, please. Thank you. It is in Ephesians 5.26. And then we're going to read the last one and someone else there. Luke 13.16. Let someone read for me Ephesians 5, 26, please. And then we close with Luke 13, 16. A lot of scripture today. You've got a hand for the scriptures. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pamela, what does the bathroom look after I bathed? <laughs> Clive, I don't wash like this. I... In between the toes. I don't miss. Forget about the millimeter. A millimeter is big. So I know what it is to wash myself thoroughly. But so I do with God's word as well, which is so important. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Read to us that one. Thank you. Husbands. Love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word. Hallelujah. Give your Lord a hand. Amen. There's another scripture that speaks about the washing of the word as well. You're going to read that as well. But before that, can someone read to us Luke 13, 16 about the word of God? That is so important to us. Thank you. I read from Luke 16, verse 17. Yes. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tittle of the law to fail. One tittle of the law to fail. So the word of God can never be done away with. It's better for the heavens and the earth to pass away than one tittle, or it says in Hebrew, one yud, correct? That is the smallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It's a yud. The very word which my surname starts with is a yud. Is that correct? Even the name of Yeshua, the name that his name gets started with is a yud. That's the smallest word in the Hebrew alphabet. It's easier. It's easier for the heavens and the earth to pass away 
then one youth from his word will pass away. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good. Get another scripture there of the washing of the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got it? Pastor, we just get that one, but it goes on. Yes, go on. Now, there's another scripture, Paul. There's okay. actually two others, but you can read on. All right, we keep looking, Pastor. It says here, uh, washing of the water through the word to present her to himself as a radiant church. As a radiant church. I, I'll ask the guy next to you, how radiant the church are you? I know this morning some of you took it upon you to go and rebuke some priest or domini. You think you can do that? You cannot do that. Not your place of authority. You cannot do that. Even if he's wrong, it's not for you to do that. Amen. So God's word corrected you this morning. You learned that manners from other people who thought they can do it. They do not have the authority to do that. Yes. Read on anything else without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish mm. but to be holy and blameless read that last portion again say to guys to listen and to present her to himself no, as no, that what you read the last now but without the stain without stain or wrinkle without stain or wrinkle? Mm -hmm. Tell me, you women, you love your dresses very much. The day when you got married, that dress that you had on, how would have that dress looked with wrinkles? Or maybe one wrinkle? One wrinkle will mess up the whole dress. Is that not so, Pam? Huh? So you might sure on that day there was not one wrinkle in that dress. Why was it? Why did you do it like that? She wanted to represent herself well to her husband without wrinkle. So everything about you was fine. The hair, everything, every hair was in place. Everything about you went in place, huh? You look good. You might you want some foot devices, I believe. Where? You look good. My wife as well. The day when she presented herself to me, I tell you, I tell you, wow, wow, wow. She looked good. No wrinkle in her dress. Her hair were perfect. She looked so good. Because she was, she was presenting herself to her husband. So the church of Jesus present herself, and you are part of that church, to your husband Jesus perfectly. In Jesus' name. Now we do things. We got the wrinkle there. We got the wrinkle there. We think it's okay. It's stain here and it's stain there. We want to come to Jesus with a wrinkle here and a stain here. Huh? Because you think you can do that and you think you can do that and you think you can go into rebellion. You think you can judge. And you can think you can take on every second person that you want to. How, how do you look? How radiant are you when you present yourself to your husband as the church, as part of the church of Jesus? Okay, Satan going to, you need to look good. Read again, without stain, without wrinkle, please read that. It's so beautiful. Without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish. Or any other blemish. Any other blemish. Yes, is it all? But holy and blameless. Ha, ha, but holy and blameless. Hallelujah. That's how my wife looked when she presented herself to me on that day. And that's what Yuki said now. Amen. Holy and blameless. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a hand. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you can present yourself. Because God corrected a couple of things in your life. He's so good. Say thank you, Jesus, for your words. 
Your words is powerful. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give God a great hand for his words. So that the man of God might be equipped thoroughly for every good work. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.